Erev Tov Rabotai, we are continuing with our Mishnah Yomi, Masechet Yevamot. We are up to Perik Yud Mishnah Dale. Today's Mishnah should be Leilu Nishmat Neria Ben Svetlana, Ranbai, Veliao Ben Burcha Yisraelov, and Chanabad Miriam, Minuchatam Began Eden, Amen, and Leavdi Ben Chaim Lachaim, and the Refua Shelema of Daniel Shalom Ben Rosa, and Mariana Miriam Chai, Batamara Betoch Shachul Yisrael. The Mishnah now discusses a man who received mistaken information that his wife had died and married her sister, whom he is forbidden to marry while his wife is alive. We have learned previously that the Torah forbids a man to marry two sisters. Now, even if a man divorces his wife, he may not marry her sister while she is still alive. However, if his wife dies, he may marry her sister, as the Torah says in Seva Vaikra, chapter 18, verse 18, and the Mishnah says here, Mesechad Yevamot, Chapter 4, Mishnah 13. The Mishnah begins, Mishal Chayishtole Midinat Ayam. If a person's wife went overseas, Ubao Vamulo Meta Ishtecha, and witnesses came and told him, Your wife died. And he married her sister based on that testimony. Vachagach Bat Ishto. And then his original wife came back. Muter Lachzorlo, his original wife, is permitted to return to him. Since his original wife was still alive, his relationship with her sister was simply unlawful cohabitation, which does not forbid him from returning to his wife. If a person marries a woman whom he is forbidden to marry under the penalty of karet, the marriage does not take effect. Since marrying two sisters is punished with karet, marriage to one wife's sister does not take effect. Now, although we learned in the previous Mishnah that if a woman commits adultery based on incorrect information that her husband died, she is forbidden to return to her husband, no such penalty applies when a person unlawfully cohabits with his wife's sister based on incorrect information and he may return to his wife as the Gemara explains in Masechet Yevamot on page 94b and 95a. Hu mutar bikrovot shniya. In addition, he is permitted to marry the close relatives of the second wife. U shniya muteret bikrovav. And the second wife is permitted to marry his close relatives. Although a person is forbidden to marry the close relatives of his spouse, when a person marries, he becomes forbidden to marry certain of, certain of his wife's relatives, for example, her daughter. And similarly, a wife is forbidden to marry certain of her husband's relatives, for example, his son. He is not forbidden in our case to marry the close relatives of a person with whom he cohabited. As we will see in chapter 11, Mishnah 1. And if the first wife dies, he is permitted to marry the second one because the person may marry his wife's sister after his wife dies. Another case in which a man remarried based on an incorrect Incorrect report. Amulo meta ishtecha. Witnesses told him your wife died. Venasa et achota, and he married her sister based on that report. Vachga chamulo kayemet aitav meta. Later, other witnesses told him your wife was still alive at the time that you married her sister, but she has now died. Havlad rishon mamzer. A child that he had with his wife's sister before his wife died is a mamzer. Ve'acharon eno mamzer. But a child that they had after his wife died is not a mamzer because at that time they were permitted to marry. Now. The Mishnah taught that a man who married his wife's sister based on an incorrect report may return to his original wife without restriction. This implies that even if his second wife, his sister-in-law, became forbidden to return to her original husband because of this marriage, he may still return to his original wife. For example, if the husband of his wife's sister had also gone overseas and she married her brother-in-law only because she had heard that her husband had also died and her husband then came back, she is forbidden to return to him as we learned in Mishnah 1. However, her brother-in-law, her second husband, is permitted to uh, still permitted to return to his original wife. Now, Rabbi Yossi disagrees. Rabbi Yossi, Omer, Rabbi Yossi says, Kol sheposel aledechirim. Any case in which a man's second marriage causes his second wife to become disqualified to others, meaning if his marriage to his wife's sister caused her to become forbidden to return to her original husband, posel alidat smoy disqualifies himself as well, and he may not return to his original wife. But in any case where he does not cause his second wife to become disqualified to others, meaning where his second wife may return to her original husband, and no posel alidat smoy does not disqualify himself, and he may return to his original wife. Now, according to Rabbi Yossi, a man whose wife went overseas is not always permitted to return to her after marrying a sister. Rabbi Yossi's ruling is based on a completely dif- different understanding of the laws taught in Mishnah 1 of this chapter. We learned there that if a woman remarried because she mistakenly thought that her husband had died, she was forbidden to return to her first husband. We said that this is a penalty because she did not verify that her husband was truly dead before remarrying. Rabbi Yossi disagrees. 
Rabbi Yossi holds that the reason such a woman may not return to her first husband is because she receives a get from her second husband. As we learned in Mishnah 1, she needs a get from her second husband, although she was never legally married to him, because people might think that they were truly married if she did not receive a get. People might think that a woman can leave her husband without a get. According to Rabbi Yossi, it is because she receives a get from her second husband that she may not return to her first husband. For if she would return to her first husband after receiving a get from the second man, it would seem as though her first husband is remarrying his wife after she had been married and divorced from a second husband, which is prohibited because we know once a divorced woman remarries, the Torah forbids her to ever remarry her first husband. It says in Sevo Dvarim, chapter 24, verse 4. So according to Rabbi Yossi, it is to avoid such an appearance that she is forbidden to return to her first husband. Since the reason she may not return to her first husband is because she received a get from her second husband, it follows that in a case where she does not need a get from her second husband, she may return to her first husband. So according to Rabbi Yossi, our Mishnah is such a case. When the first sister returns from overseas, everyone will realize that her husband's marriage to the second sister was a mistake. And they were never truly married. Therefore, there is no need for him to give her a get. And since the second sister does not receive a get from him, she may return to her first husband. This is the case where Rabbi Yossi says, where he does not cause his second wife to become disqualified to others, he does not disqualify himself from returning to his original wife. However, this is true only if the husband of the first sister had been fully married to her with Nisuin. If he was only betrothed to her before he went overseas, then even when she returns, people will not realize that his later marriage to the second sister was a mistake. Rather, they will think that his betrothal to the first sister had been based on some condition, and when the condition was not met, the betrothal was nullified, thereby allowing him to legally marry the second sister. Although this, this did not actually happen, people might think that it happened. Therefore, he must give the second sister a get, which will then forbid her to return to her first husband, and it also forbids him from returning to his first wife. The sister went overseas because he had given her sister a get, and she therefore now appears to be the sister of the woman he divorced. And this is the case in which Rabbi Yossi says, where he caused his second wife to become disqualified to others, he disqualifies himself from returning to his first wife. This is not a concern where he, where, where he was fully married, because only betrothal can be made conditionally, but completion of marriage in is never made conditionally. This is how the Rav explains the Mishnah. And that is a botai of Mishnah Dalad. Mishnah continues, A man may not marry his wife's sister, even if they are only half-sisters, whether they are paternal sisters, they have the same father but not the same mother, or maternal sisters, they have the same mother but not the same father. This Mishnah discusses a case where a man married a number of half-sisters, each one on the assumption that her sister had died. The Mishnah discusses five women who we will call A, B, C, D, and E. Some of them are half-sisters, they share one parent, some of them are not related. A and B are sisters from the father, B and C are sisters from the mother, C and D are sisters from the father, and D and E are sisters from the mother. A, C, and E have no parents, share no parents at all, and are not related to one another, and B and D are not related to each other either. It's good to write it out. If you write it out, you'll be able to understand the Mishnah to visualize the case. The Mishnah begins, If a man's wife went overseas and witnesses told him your wife died, and then he married her paternal sister, sister from her father, based on that testimony. So he heard that his first wife, A, died, and he married B, her paternal sister. His second wife then went overseas, and he heard that she too died, and he married his second wife's maternal sister. So he heard that his second wife, B, died, and he married C, who was the maternal sister of B, but was not related to A. Meta Mavia, his third wife then went overseas and he heard that she too died and he married his third wife's paternal sister. He heard that C died and he married D, who was the paternal sister of C, but unrelated to B or A. I'm sorry. Meta Meima. His fourth wife then went overseas and he heard that she too died and he married his fourth wife's maternal sister so he heard that d died and he married e who was the maternal sister of d but unrelated to c b or a all four men who had gone away were then discovered to be alive the law is as follows he is permitted to remain married to the first third and fifth wives 
since his first wife was actually still alive, his marriage to her sister, the second wife, did not take effect, like we learned in the previous Mishnah, and he may not remain with the second wife because she is his wife's sister. Since his marriage to the second wife did not take effect, he was allowed to marry her sister, the third wife, who was not related to the first wife, and that marriage did take effect. Since his marriage to the third wife took effect, his marriage to her sister, the fourth wife, did not take effect, for she was his wife's sister. Therefore, the fourth wife was never actually his wife, and he was able to marry her sister, the fifth wife, who was not related to either of his actual wives, the first and third. Therefore, the mar that marriage took effect. So it comes out that he is married to the first, third, and fifth wives, but not to the second and fourth. Therefore, if he later dies without children, and his brother performs Zebra Mechalitza with either the first, third, or fifth wife, she exempts her co-wives from Yibum or Chalitza because these two women are all his legal wives. Like we learned in chapter 1, Mishnah 1, if a person has more than one wife and dies childless, once one wife undergoes Yibum or Chalitza, her co-wives are free to remarry. However, he is forbidden to remain with the second and fourth wives because each of them is a sister to one of his wives. The second one, B, is a sister of his first wife, A, and the fourth one, D, is a sister of his third wife, C. Then accordingly, if he dies childless, Yibum cohabitation by a brother with one of them does not accept her co-wives, his other wives from Yibum or Khalitza, because these two women are not legally his wives. Now, although the Mishnah calls his other wives co-wives, these two women, B and D, are not in fact married to him at all and are not co-wives with his other wives. The Mishnah is calling them co-wives because that because they thought that they had married him. But the Mishnah is telling us that if a brother would do Yibum Khalitza, with one of them, he would not exempt the other wives from Yibam Chalitza because these two women are not legally his wives. The Mishnah gives another case where a man married the same five women. In this case, the report of the first wife's deaths was true, but the reports of the deaths of the rest of the wives were not true. If he married the second wife after the death of the first one, meaning the first wife actually died, and he then married the second wife, he then married the other three based on incorrect reports like in the previous case. He married all five wives like in the previous case. However, A had really died as had been reported. The other reports were all incorrect, so B, C, and D were still alive. In this case, he is permitted to remain with the second and fourth wives. Here, the second and the fourth are legally his wives, and therefore, if he dies childless and either of them performs Yibur Mechalitza, Potrot Saroten, she exempts her co wives from Yibur Mechalitza, Vasuba Shlishit, Bachamishit. However, he is forbidden to remain with the third and fifth wives, since each of them is a sister to one of his wives. Then, Biat Achadmen Potrot Sarata, therefore, if he dies childless, Yibum by a brother with either of them does not exempt her co wives from Yibur Mechalitza. In this case, since the first wife had really died, the marriage to the second wife took effect. Therefore, his marriage to the second wife's sister, the third wife, could not take effect. Since he was not married to the third wife, his marriage to her sister, the fourth wife, did take effect. And therefore, his marriage to her sister, the fifth wife, did not take effect because she was his wife's sister. In this case, he is married to the second and fourth wives, but not to the third and fifth ones. Again, I really recommend writing out the cases to visualize, to understand, to get the Mishnah clear. That is on the Buddha of today's Mishnah Yomi. Bauch Adonai Le'olam, Amen Va Amen.